more than welcome to this Open Table Network celebration for LGBTQIA plus History Month. My name is Alex Claire Young, and I have the privilege of being a co-chair of the Trustees of the Open Table Network. And this is my wife, Jo, and we're both ministers in the United Reformed Church. The Open Table Network is a growing partnership of Christian worship communities which welcome and affirm people who are lesbian, gay, bi, trans, queer slash questioning, intersex and asexual, LGBTQIA for short, our families, friends and all our allies. The network has been created by and for LGBTQIA plus people. We meet online at the moment, but usually in person, in inclusive churches, where we find God and each other and have the time and peace to grow together. Churches don't always feel safe or welcoming to LGBTQIA plus people, but our name, Open Table, is an open invitation to come in just as you are and be with us in a safe, affirming community. Welcome to all of you joining us from across and beyond the network of Open Table communities in England and Wales. A special welcome to you if this is your first encounter with the Open Table Network, or if you're in a place where a ministry like this is not yet present. Today we mark LGBT Plus History Month, an annual festival to celebrate the lives and the achievements of LGBT Plus people, both past and present. In the UK, it's celebrated in February each year to coincide with the 2003 abolition of Section 28, a law passed in 1988 by the UK government that stopped councils and schools promoting the teaching of the acceptability of homosexuality as a pretended family relationship. The aim of the month is to be an exciting, informative and celebratory time to educate out prejudice and to make LGBT plus people in all their rich diversity more visible. LGBT plus History Month began in February 2005, organised by Schools Out UK, a campaign group for LGBT plus people in education. Each year it takes a theme from the education curriculum. This year's theme is Body, Mind, Spirit. It reflects the personal, social, health and economic PSHE education curriculum. It also lends itself well to a reflection on our identities as LGBT plus people of faith. So let's pray. We gather in the name of one who creates, the one who liberates and the one who heals. Amen. Come into this space. Come in. Come into this space which we make holy by our presence. Come in with all of your vulnerabilities and strengths, fears and anxieties, loves and hope. For here you need not hide, nor pretend, nor be anything other than who you are and are called to be. Come into this space where we can touch and be touched, heal and be healed, forgive and be forgiven. Come into this space where the ordinary is sanctified, the human is celebrated, the compassionate is expected. Come into this space. Together, we make it a holy space. You breathe love.
Creator God, you made us all different, and we rejoice in those differences. Companion Christ, you called each person into your body, and we welcome each other's contribution. Renewing Spirit, you encourage us to explore new ways, and we are excited by new opportunities. Living God, as this body lives, so you live in us. We acknowledge your life in us. We are sorry for when we have failed you. Once again, we are ready to be your body here. Amen. Amen. Life-giving God, whose wisdom speaks to us in light and breath, in earth and flesh, May we share your delight in all that has life and proclaim your incarnate word, the lover of all creation, through Jesus Christ, in whom all things hold together. Amen. Amen. Christ is just like the human body. A body is a unit and has many parts. 
and all the parts of the body are one body, even though they are many. We were all baptised by one spirit into one body, whether Jew or Greek or slave or free, and we all were given one spirit to drink. Certainly, the body isn't one part, but many. If the foot says, I'm not part of the body because I'm not a hand, does that mean it's not part of the body? If the ear says, I'm not part of the body because I'm not an eye, does that mean it's not part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, what would happen to hearing? And if the whole body were an ear, what would happen to the sense of smell? But as it is, God has placed each one of the parts in the body just like he wanted. If all were one, the same body part, what would happen to the body? So as it is, there are many parts but one body. So the eye can't say to the hand, I don't need you. Or in turn, the head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. Instead, the parts of the body that people think are the weakest are most necessary. The parts of the body that we think are less honourable are the ones we honour most. The private parts of our body that are presentable are the ones that are given most the dignity. The parts of our body that are presentable don't need this. But God has put the body together, giving greater honour to the part with less honour, so that there won't be division in the body, and so that parts might have mutual concern for each other. If one part suffers, all parts suffer with it. If one part gets the glory, all the parts celebrate with it. Oh God, you search me and you know me. All my thoughts lie open to your gaze. When I walk or lie down, you are before me. Ever the maker and keeper of my days. You Blessed are you who are raging, blessed are you who are mourning, and blessed are you who feel numb. Blessed are you who feel sick and tired, 
and sick and tired. Blessed are you who refuse to turn away. Blessed are you who need to turn away. Blessed are you who keep breathing deep. Blessed are you who are tending to your own needs. And blessed are you who are tending to the needs of others. Blessed are you who have been calling. Blessed are you who have been organising. Blessed are you who have been testifying. Blessed are you who have been hearing. And blessed are you who have been resisting. Blessed are you who feel broken and open and beyond repair. Blessed are you who are raw beyond words. Blessed are you who are working hotlines and crisis care centres and bearing witness to the forces of violence and trauma unleashed and unloosed. Blessed are you who are marching. Blessed are you who are weeping. And blessed are you who preach and know the divinity resides in the despised, abused and violated flesh. Blessed are you who know deep in your bones that you are good and beautiful and beloved and sacred and worthy and believed and held and capable of healing beyond your wildest imagination. Blessed are you who remind others that they are good and beautiful and beloved and sacred and worthy and believed and held and capable of healing beyond their wildest imagination. Blessed are we when we dare to dream of a world without sexual violence, without white supremacy, without misogyny, without police brutality, without anti-trans and anti-queer violence. Blessed are we when we stay tender. Blessed are we when we stay fierce. And blessed are we when we dare to imagine repair and transformation. Blessed are we when we labour together to make it so. Amen. Let's pray. God, our parent, you created and continue to create us from the inside out. You knit us together and are still knitting. Stitches that spiral out from the centre, reaching towards the other. Help us as we share in the crafting of lives. Be on our lips as we enter into tricky and precious conversations. Be in our hands as we attempt to show love and care. Be with your children as we grow into the people whom you call us to be. Creating God, hear our prayer. Amen. This is the third LGBT plus History Month service that I've been part of this year, and I've wrestled with the mind, body and spirit theme each time, carefully navigating lines about what supposedly can and can't be said in church. In the church, we have often focused on embodiment as being private or none of anybody's business. We shy away from conversations about bodies and nudity, seeing them as impolite, or possibly even a safeguarding risk. This isn't only a problem for cis and heterosexual Christians. LGBTQ plus Christian campaigners have often needed to focus on the importance of privacy regarding our bodies and our sex lives in order to highlight how problematic the church's obsession with who sleeps with who is. And we're right to do so. A person's private life is their private life, and it should be an individual's choice what aspects that they choose to share with others. A person's body, or what they choose to do with it, should certainly never be controlled by ecclesial authorities. The fact that it still is, in many churches, is simply wrong. The fact is, though, that as long as the church only talks about LGBTQ plus bodies as problematic, and never talked about embodied diversity openly, honestly, and with joyous celebration, the church will continue to promote normative embodiment and to deny the image of God in LGBTQ plus bodies, asexual bodies, fat bodies, black and brown bodies, elderly bodies, and disabled bodies. 
until the church starts to talk more and better about bodies, it will be complicit in abuse. Until the church starts to talk more and better about bodies, it will be unable to fully embody Christ in the world. Time and time again, I have experienced assumptions about my body in churches. Assumptions that either suggest that I see my body as a problem, or that I have or want a stereotypically male body, or that I'm still female because of chromosomes or genitalia. Often these assumptions are voiced in public, sometimes even to a national audience. Silence isn't my chosen response. I choose to speak about my body. I choose to celebrate my created and recreated, transformed and transforming, wonderfully queer, trans body. The question is, can the church cope with this celebration? I wonder how you relate to your body. I'm going to take you through a time of meditation during which I encourage you to move and think about your body and bring your whole self to God in prayer. These are my feet. How do they feel? How do I treat them? Where do they go grudgingly? And what makes them jiggle with joy? Are they comfortable in my shoes? Can I dust the sand off and leave spaces where I feel unwelcome or unsafe? I love myself. I am becoming myself. I am loved. I am enough. These are my legs. How do they feel? How do I treat them? What makes them ache and sting? Is it necessary? Am I growing? Do they do what I wish they would? Am I patient enough with them? Do I feel that they are a part of who I am? I love myself. I am becoming myself. I am loved. I am enough. This is my centre. How do I feel? How do I treat myself? Do I force my body into situations or clothes that restrain or hurt it? Has someone else hurt me? How can I make myself feel whole again? Am I ready to learn to love myself? I love myself. I am becoming myself. I am loved. I am enough. These are my arms. How do they feel? How do I treat them? Are they strong and aching? Are they long and gangly? Are they full and soft? Where are they scarred? Have they been broken? What loads do I carry, sometimes unseen? I love myself. I am becoming myself. I am loved. I am enough. These are my hands. How do they feel? How do I treat them? Are they agile and quick or slow and tired? Who do I touch? How do I touch? Do my hands belong to me? What can they do for me? What can they do for others? I love myself. I am becoming myself. I am loved. I am enough. This is my head. In here is me. All of my hidden thoughts and feelings. All of my identity, learning and becoming. Seeds that will sprout and grow and change. Some corners are dark. I want to keep them locked. Others light, full of joy. This is my face. 
Is it me or a mask? I can choose. I am choosing. One day I will be able to choose. I love myself. I am becoming myself. I am loved. I am enough. Now, the rainbow flag has been a symbol of LGBT plus people around the world for decades. Just as white light is made up of the many colours of the rainbow, so too is our community made up of many different types of people. The rainbow is a symbol of our diversity. And the pride flag was first created in 1978 by the artist Gilbert Baker for the San Francisco Gay Freedom Day Parade. Gilbert Baker assigned each of its six colours a particular meaning that resonated with the lives of LGBT plus people. And so, for our intercessions, we'll be using these colours and these meanings to guide our reflections. So, let us pray. Creator God, who breathed your life into the dry bones of the desert, meet with us today. To our questions, to our worries, to our anxieties, to our doubts and fears, breathe your life. Sustain us and renew us. Amen.
Lord Jesus, our great healer, we pray for our LGBTQIA siblings all over the world who are suffering today. Queer and trans people in our own church communities especially are hurting, Lord. Comfort those whose minds and spirits are troubled by the hate and prejudice wrongly spread by some, even in your name. And open the hearts of those persecutors to know the truth of your love and to learn to give the unconditional welcome that you ask of each of us. Open our own hearts, Lord, that we may play our part in loving unconditionally and spreading your compassion to all those in pain of any kind. Amen. And Almighty God, in the midst of this global pandemic, we pray for everyone who is suffering from COVID-19 today. We give thanks for those caring for them at home and in hospitals, here and all over the world. We hold in our hearts, Lord, in a short moment of silence, everyone known to each of us who needs to know your loving healing today. Amen. God of light, we lift up to you the darkness of this world. We lift up the injustice, the pain, the hurt and the sorrow. May your light shine in this darkness. May your light shine through us to the world around us evermore. Amen. Creator God, we pray for your world. Give us your spirit of compassionate anger that we may live and work in harmony with you for the healing of the earth. We have polluted rivers and oceans, flattened beautiful cities and ransacked places of prayer. Help us to care for the water, the air and the soil. Help us to plant more trees than we uproot. Help us to cherish beauty in nature, buildings and in people. We pray for all those scientists, campaigners and politicians who've devoted their time and energies to safeguarding your creation. For everyone who is working to limit the impact of climate change and most especially for protection, strength and perseverance for those communities who are being pushed further into poverty by it. We hold in our hearts before you the people of those parts of the world who are most affected by extreme weather conditions and storms. Amen. Lord God, you are the divine creator of all and the artist who made the colours themselves, the uniqueness of the long necked giraffe and the beauty of the delicate butterfly. Last year has been hard for all the creators you created. With theatres, galleries and cinemas closed, there have been no audiences for the things being made. May you bless those whose living depends on those audiences and give them creativity even without them. May this year ahead be one of creative abundance in ways we've not been able to imagine. In Jesus' name, Amen. God, as we contemplate our own journeys of faith, we give thanks for those who have helped us on our way. In a moment of quiet, we call to mind those that we know, love and pray for, lifting them up to you as we draw our spirits nearer to them. God of the rainbow, bind us together. 
Amen. The peace of God is uproar and colour, dissent and challenge, wandering and exile, invitation and inclusion, drawing our bodies and spirits into the riotous harmony of God. God, we welcome your presence with us. May the companionship we share nourish our bodies, hearts and minds, and may our spirits be refreshed as we live in the light of your presence with us now and at all times and places. Amen. The word Eucharist in Greek means thanksgiving. It's one of the words that Christians use to describe the central act of hospitality of our faith. Remembering Jesus's last meal with his friends before he died and rose to new life. We also call it communion, which means sharing in common. As we cannot share bread and wine in common today, let's share this prayer of thanks as an act of spiritual communion with one another and those who have gone before us. Thank you to the queer and the trans ancestors who left us histories to hold on to. Thank you to every child who is the first in their class or their school, or their town, or their family, who made it a little easier for the next one. Thank you to the elders who fought for yourselves and for us. Thank you to the ones who let your freak flag fly. Thank you to the ones who do queer in your own way. Thank you to the ones who take each other in. Thank you for kissing in public and holding hands in the street. Thank you to the ones who share their scars. Thank you to the ones who hold space. No pressure. Thank you, loud ones. Thank you, quiet ones. Thank you to the ones who helped us learn to love our desire. No more shame. Thank you to the ones who helped us love our trans, non-binary and intersex bodies. Thank you to you who are doing what you need to do to survive. We need you. Thank you for persisting. Thank you for proclaiming. Thank you for being. To you who have shouldered the losses and taken the hit and been fired, betrayed, beaten, bullied or isolated. Your pain is honoured. Your contribution is not forgotten. You deserve so much better. Thank you. Once upon a time, they could say they didn't know us, but not anymore. Here we are, bringing our sacred strange into their pews and pulpits, to their dinner tables and computer screens and beside them in waiting rooms and in checkout queues. No apologies, they are so lucky to have us here. Thank you to you who are yet to come, who will expand our understanding and help us love more deeply ourselves and each other. Thank you to every queer beloved and trans beloved who keeps choosing to live and choosing to love and choosing to support each other. Amen. 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 Thank you to all who have contributed to making this online gathering possible. Too many to mention all by name, but you will get a mention in the credits at the end. While you're here on our YouTube channel, why not subscribe to receive notifications of future updates? If you'd like to keep in touch with the Open Table Network, please subscribe to our e-news on our website, opentable.lgbt, where you will find details of all our communities across England and Wales. If you're able to support the growth of the Open Table Network, you'll find details of how you can do that on our website and in the description on this video. 
So let's go from this space, assured of our place in the love of God, the body of Christ, and the joy of the Spirit. God, we give you thanks for this fellowship that nourishes us in body and spirit, and for these bodies of ours, through which you take on flesh. May our gratitude produce faithfulness, and our faithfulness produce justice. Amen. God, who made us in your image, teach us to love ourselves as you love us. God, who made us in your image, allow us to show that image to the world. God, who made us in your image, Help us to see your image in all those we meet. God, who made us in your image. Teach us to conserve and protect all your creation. God, who made us in your image. Bless, protect, and keep us and all your children safe. Amen. Amen.